What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we'll be setting up our development environment for React projects. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? You can support the channel on Patreon where you'll get benefits such as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues where other developers will help you out. If you are interested, the link will be in the description down below. Before we can create our first React project, we need to make sure that we set up our development environment with Node.js and NPM. We all should know by now that React is a front-end, but did you know that the front-end is connected to a Node back-end? For Mac users like me, you can simply install Node through Homebrew, but it isn't something that I would recommend since it is known for giving difficulties. For that, I recommend the best option, and that's installing Node directly from their official website. Currently, I'm on the Node official webpage, which is nodejs.org. Now, Node's website already knows that I'm using macOS, but if you are using Windows, it will probably say download for Windows instead of Mac. And the same thing goes for Linux. Let's download the latest version, which is 17.0.1. Now you can save it wherever you want. Let's say the desktop, open it. And it's probably the same if you're on Windows as well. So let's continue, continue, agree. Let's save it on my Macintosh, continue. Add my password and let's install the software. This might take a second, so I will cut this part out and I'll see you back when the installation is done. All right, if you finish your installation correctly, you would probably see what the package has downloaded. It's Node and something which is called NPM. NPM stands for Node Package Manager and it is installed as a part of Node.js. There is a way on how we could see if NPM is installed correctly and that goes straight through the command line interface. So I have iTerm, so let's open it, and we won't be using a terminal a lot in this course. Let me zoom in. Inside my terminal, let's say npm space dash v. It doesn't really matter where you are located in your terminal because you've installed npm globally. If you installed Node correctly, you will probably see a version number like I have, which is 8.1.0. You can also do the same thing with note. So let's say note space dash V. And by the way, the dash V is a flag that you can add to your note command, which basically stands for version. So our note dash version, which is 17.0.1, which is the version that we just installed. Now we did install notes, but I haven't really explained what note actually is. You can see note as JavaScript, but without the browser. It has a runtime environment that allows you to build full stack JavaScript applications. Now let's be clear about one thing. You actually don't need Node to use React, but you do need to use the Node Package Manager, so NPM, to install dependencies. All right, it's finally time to create our first React application. As you can see on my desktop, I have a folder right here called Workspace. And in this folder, I basically store all projects related to coding. If I open it and let me zoom in, you'll see that I have a couple projects and the rest of them are all on GitHub. When it comes to advanced programming, you don't want to perform a right click, create a new folder and say first react project or something. What you actually want to do is to create a project as a lazy developer as that I am through the CLI, so the command line interface. Let's close off our workspace inside the terminal we need to perform a command to get into our workspace. And that's actually pretty simple. What we need to do is CD. So we want to change directories, space, and then we got to say where we want to change directories to. Now in our case, we need to navigate to our desktop. So let's write down desk and hit tab. And you see that it has auto completion. So it is inside our desktop. We hit enter. You see that desktop has been printed out right here. We can also perform a command to see what we got inside our desktop by performing ls. Right here, we have our node package that we just installed and our workspace. Now simple, let's change directories back into our workspace. Now React has a pretty cool command which allows you to create a new single page application. For that, we need to perform the following command, which is mpx, so not npm, which is a package runner tool then we need to tell MPX what we want to do. Now, in our case, we want to create a new React project. That can be done by saying create-react-app. Now we do need to add another parameter right here, so space, 
because we need to define the name of our folder or basically our project. So let's say my-react-app. Now before we hit enter, let's just read out what we're doing right now. Now we started off with MPX and we need to tell MPX what to do. What we want to do is to create a new React app. We also need to have a name for our app, which will be my React app. If you haven't performed this command before, you will probably be prompted with a message asking if you want to install the package create react app. So let's hit enter. Like you see it right now, it's telling me that I need to install the following package. Now let me zoom in. All right. I need to install create react dash app. So let's say Y, hit enter. And this will create a new react project from scratch for us which might take a minute because it will pull in all necessary dependencies and there are actually quite a lot of them. So just pause the video and I will see you back once the installation process is done. All right, once your dependencies have been pulled in, you'll see that the project has been created successfully and it also shows us a couple commands that we can perform. For now, the most important command that we need to run is the npm start command. What this command will do is start the development server. The npm run build command right here is also a pretty important one because it will bundle the application into static files for production. Whenever you want to perform a command that is related to your project, you need to make sure that you are in the root of your project directory. Right now, you'll see that we're located in our workspace. So let's say CD and we created a new project called my-react-app, hit enter and we'll change directories in my React app. Now, if we open my workspace for a second, you will indeed see that we created a new folder today called my React app. Now let's go back because I want to actually open my project inside a code editor and you don't need to do it because we will set up the code editor, but I want to go over the files that are added inside our project. So let me open my Visual Studio code for a second, which is taking a while. Let's drag my React application, the folder inside my code editor. Let's make it full screen, close it off, and let's zoom in. The first folder that you will see in the root of our directory is the node underscore modules folder. I've mentioned before that you have pulled in a lot of dependencies through NPM, and that's actually this folder. If we open it, you will see all dependencies related to the current project, which is actually quite a lot and it doesn't stop actually. Now let's go back to the top, make it smaller again. Be aware that you don't want to change files inside the node underscore modules folder, because once you deploy your project or you run your NPM again, it will update it automatically. Now the second folder is the public folder, and the public folder is basically the location where you store assets in your project. So think about images or Google fonts or whatever, then we have the source folder, so let's open that one as well. The source folder will contain all React related source code of your project. So basically, this is the folder where the magic happens and where we will spend most of our time. So make it smaller again. We have the git ignore. And well, if you're a git user, this one makes sense because it allows you to exclude files and folders when you push your code to git. Then we have the package-log.json. Let me close off the port. This file will store the exact version number of the dependencies from the package.json file. So React has a version of 17, the React DOM as well, Web Vitals of 1.1.2, and way more. Then we got the package.json, and this is actually a pretty important one because it manages our application dependencies that are included in the node underscore modules folder. There's also a section right here called scripts that you can run within your application. Now the last file is the readme.md. This file is a markdown file that includes a lot of helpful tips and links that React provided for us. Now, if we go back to our package.json, I've said that there are some scripts that we can run. And these four commands can be performed inside the CLI. Instead of navigating back to our CLI, we can also open the navbar of Visual Studio Code, click on terminal and open a new terminal which will basically open the integrated terminal, which is all right as well. So what we can do is to run the first one. So the start command. Now to do that, we need to run npm run, followed by the command. So start, build, test, or eject. 
So what we're going to do is to say start, hit enter. What this command will do is opening a local server for us that we can work with. But as you can see right now, the site can't be reached. So let's navigate back. Right here, you can see that we're getting an error. It's unsupported and it's happening because of the node version. We're using the latest node version. This is causing some issues with our node modules. So there is a workaround for it. What we can do is to remove start in our start script. Say double dash open SSL dash legacy dash provider space start. If we save it and hit the arrow up in the terminal and run npm run start again, hit enter. You can see that the script is being run and our local server is spinning up right now. And right here, you can see that our local host has been opened with a port of number 3000. And if we navigate back to Visual Studio Code, you can see that we also have a network URL right here, which I will actually blur out, but you will probably have one as well. Before I wrap up the video, let's quickly see what this page comes from. If we close off our package.json, and let me zoom out, open the index.html file inside the public folder, scroll down, you'll see that we have a title of React app. We also have a div right here, which is empty, which is a div with an ID of root. This isn't a file where you will be hanging out a lot because it's a static.html file, but this file will be served to the browser. That will be done through the div ID root. Like I mentioned before, the real magic happens in the source folder. So let's open it and specifically our landing screen, which will be the index.js file. So right here, we're grabbing the React DOM. Then we're going to render something. That something is our app component right here, which is the app.js file inside the source folder. This file right here, let's open it as well. If we scroll down, you will basically see the landing screen that we got on our local host. So edit, source JavaScript, learn React. Let's navigate to the browser, edit, source app, and learn React. If we navigate back, open the index.js, you will see that it's getting a document and it's searching for an element by ID with the name of root, and it will print out our component. So it will basically replace a div ID with a component that we have of app.js. This was it for this video where we installed Node for React. We pulled in a React skeleton project through MPX. We talked about the different files and folders in the root of our project directory, and I've shows you how the flow of our application works. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.